Hey everyone, a common question in our Slack channel is how to deal with parents or the paths within your resolver. So essentially, how can I grab hold of not just my immediate parent of the resolver, the object essentially which the field is attached to, but also to the grandparent or any parent in my past that I have. By the way, we are running workshops at NDC conferences throughout the next year. So beginning in January, we are at NDC London teaching about GraphQL and MAUI. In April, we will be at the .NET Days Romania. And in May, you can catch us at the NDC Oslo conference. So if you want to spend two days with me and Martin doing a deep dive into GraphQL, GraphQL in the .NET ecosystem, and also learn how to consume GraphQL in Maui or in React with Relay. You can find the links to the conferences in the video description. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive into it. Okay, so I have here our typical books and authors example. This should be enough to demonstrate this all. And first, let's do the obvious. Let's extend author here with the class author resolvers. And then we're going to introduce a simple resolver here that just repeats the name that we have here. But to do that, we're going to inject the parent. Typically, such a class where we have our resolvers has this extend object type attribute on here and extends in this case the author. So we don't want to change our author type here, but introduce in our authors resolver GraphQL specific stuff. For instance, GraphQL specific fields which introduces connection to other data. To do that, we often need to inject the parent, so essentially in this case, the author to generate some data to grab an ID or whatever. And this is fairly easy. If I look at my browser and go to my GraphQL server, let's create quickly a new tab. And then I can write a quick query to grab the new field that we have on the author. In this case, I have to drill here into the book. And then you can see I already have here my name to field and I can query that. And it's John Skeet in this case. But what if I wanted to create a combined field and also need information from my book? It turns out that preserving such a pass, so all the objects in your pass, actually costs performance, costs memory. We have to allocate lists for it. If you think about it, it's an immutable pass we would have to create because you could also have another book here that fetches something different. And depending on how I branch through my fields here, I have to branch this immutable pass. So that's not efficient. So what we decided is that we don't preserve the pass automatically. But there is an easy way to do that. So if I wanted to preserve the pass, I have essentially to push data down. So I could create a small middleware and let's do that. So if you don't know what middlewares are, there is an episode about what middlewares are and I have linked it into the description of this video. In my case here, I'm just creating a descriptor attribute and putting the middleware in there. This is the basic setup for my attribute here. I created a preserved parent as attribute. Essentially what we will do is store the parent of a field that we annotate in the scoped context data. The scope context data is some context that we build up in resolvers and that can be accessed in the resolver pipeline of this resolver, but also in all child resolvers. The scope context data is essentially an immutable dictionary. So if you don't use it, you don't pay for it. But if you have a use case for it, you pay for your use case and just in that place. There are also other context data. There's a global context data and that is available in every resolver. So you can mutate it and it will show up in every resolver you mutate. There's the third context that is a local context data. It's again an immutable dictionary and it only shows up in your resolver pipeline. So you have three kinds of states. In our use case, we're going to use the scoped context data. So let's do that. So in order to write a middleware, I will grab the descriptor here and then say use. And with use, we signal this is a middleware. And a middleware has this pattern where we say next. This delegate here is the factory that creates our middleware pipeline element. And then we define the actual middleware 
element we say async context and this is the middleware context and then this is our middleware okay in our case we're going to invoke the next delegate here to execute the next element in the pipeline and that means essentially for us that all the rest of the pipeline is being invoked and now the moment we get back control down here, we have the result in our hands. So we could grab the result from this resolver and then we preserve it in our scope context data. So to do that, we're going to say context dot set scoped state here. And that essentially is a helper method that mutates the immutable dictionary. We give it a key and we already preserved here our name that we want to use. And then we grab the value and that is the result here. Now we can use this attribute anywhere in our graph. For instance, let's use it on the get book here. I can say here now preserve parent as book and this allows me to now inject here in our name to resolver the book as book so what we look for is we look for this attribute and then we take this as a key to our resolver state so you could also specify the key here if it's some kind of a weird weird key you could also specify it here but it's quite nice to match it with this guy so and then we could use the state for instance to combine the name of the author and the book here name and title let's call it this and then we would like to introduce this little string function here let's try it out we go back to our browser refresh the schema and you can see that is no longer valid because now we have a uh, name and title here if we run it then we get john skeet and c sharp in depth so very basic so if you wanted to preserve the whole pass i wouldn't actually do it it costs a lot of pair for something that is not worth it but let's say he wanted to do that then we could write a more general middleware that is applied to all the fields and would preserve that and i'm going to show you how to do that so this is more explicit so we could preserve now at any resolver anything that we wanted to and it would be pushed down or preserved for our child resolvers but if we wanted to have something that constantly aggregates the path then we could write a general middleware and have that in our graphical configuration here so we could say use field here then essentially it's the same structure next context and then we could just define the almost same middleware in here so first again we would invoke next so the next thing we want to do is build up the pass and to build up the pass we actually need to retrieve the current pass from the content and i'm going to use here the get scope state or default to get an immutable stack as a pass object and we're going to call that the pass and if there is no pass already on the context we just will return here an empty immutable stack and after we have this pass object it's either empty or has something already in there we're going to write it back to our context data because it's immutable essentially we need to mutate it and that will return a new immutable stack here and then we write this new immutable stack back to our scope state so we're going to push onto that stack just the context.result and actually the immutable stack here should not be string it should be object and one more thing we should do here is check if result is null so if it's or rather if it's not null we're going to build up the pass and in the other case we don't care because then we don't have children with this we could now use our pass in our resolver so we could go now here and then instead of injecting the parent here we could just inject our pass object and then we could use this pass object either to enumerate over it or in my case i know what's on there so i could just use it to pop things out so the first thing i'm gonna get is the author the second is the book okay don't judge i know it's just to make the point here so you could write a lot of other stuff around that essentially you get now the whole pass here and if we run that again here you can see we get john skid and then dash c sharp and that's so this is also a way how you could preserve the pass. So there's one more optimization that we could do towards a more generalized solution, and that would be with type interceptors. With type interceptors, we could just seek out async resolvers and only preserve the pass on async resolvers. And that is more what you actually want to want, these connections to retrieve them, and that would leave out all the leaf resolvers. But this is more complicated, and I will do another episode on 
type interceptors. I hope this showed you a couple of ways to preserve the, the pass object here. A link to the demo code you can find in the description of this video. And with this, I'm out.